Hi everyone, back again with uh, Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers, and we are just a few weeks out from the 5.2 patch. I wanted to spend some time talk about melding, uh, not necessarily a specific set and all the stats on that, but melding in general uh, to give you some do's and don'ts about uh, what constitutes good melding and what constitutes actually really poor melding because a lot of crafters get into uh, trouble with their melds because they are kind of far out of range of what they need to be and I'm going to try to explain that. I'm going to go into a little bit of detail here so please bear with me. This is going to take a few minutes but I want to look at recipes and the master books that we have had over the years. Currently we have seven books and in each of these books there is a st set of statistics that's shown for the required craftsmanship and control in order to actually craft these items. If your craftsmanship was below 391 you can't you can't make it. You can't craft it. If your control is below 374 uh, with or without buffs or however you do it you can't craft it, so you need to meet these basic requirements. And in each master book, there are these numbers Craftsmanship 451, Control 407. The point I want to make here is that there is always a ratio between craftsmanship and control. And that ratio, if you do the math, is going to range somewhere between 90% and 98% uh, throughout these entire books. It's never below 90%, never above 98. So let's do the math here, just to give you an example. Okay, we're going to look at this control number, 407, and we're going to divide that by the craftsmanship number, which is always higher. 451 and that's going to put us at about 90%. A 407 is about 90%, a 451, and this is about as low as this number is going to get, that 90% ratio. And this holds true throughout all of the um, crafting books. We have a 995 and a 955. This is a really tight ratio. Let's divide 955 divided by 995 and that equals well, it's about 96 percent so 955 is about 96 percent of 995 currently we're looking at 2140 craftsmanship and 1990 control for these two star items now the point I want to make is your skills that you use are very much dependent on your stats. In other words, the amount of progress you make with your progress step is very uh, much related to your craftsmanship stats and the amount of quality you get on each quality step is related to your control stats. But in order to make it real easy to put together a good macro or a good crafting rotation, it's very helpful if your craftsmanship and control are proportional to each other. In other words, if you went too crazy on craftsmanship and didn't do much on your control, it's going to be harder to do a good rotation just because everything is proportional to everything else. That's inherent in the design. That's built into this whole system of crafting. Uh, if you're, if you just pounded your control, you know, and, uh, and put a lot of melding into that, and just didn't put on much craftsmanship, well, that would be really hard to put together a good rotation, too. It would be more difficult. The main thing is, things are easier when you stay in some kind of proportion. For most of the time, if, uh, if you use a 95% ratio, you're going to be in great shape. Now you can go higher than 95% on your control. You can certainly do that, but you might be just wasting a lot of materia 
doing that because it might not be necessary at all. Well, let's take a look at a few things. All right, we are here at Craftaholic Central, and I think I'm going to go to one of our rotations real quick, or rather one of our rotation pages. On this page, we have a number of, of macros that are not really too crazy on the CP usage. And, uh, I mean, this can easily be done with the Blood Blue Base high quality and uh, the 538 melding uh, on the CP. Uh, but they, they will give you 100% high quality with normal quality mats. And we have 70 durability rotations. It'll do the same thing. Uh, a couple of them that will give you 100% high quality with normal quality mats. So the thing is, if your proportionality is off, in other words, your craftsmanship is way too high in relationship to your control, that's going to be a problem for you because you won't be able to hit the numbers that you really want to hit. Uh, and it just it, it throws kind of really just throws everything out of balance. I guess that's the point I'm trying to make is that it's important to have this in some kind of balance and everything be proportional to everything else. Now on the melding guide I did recently for the facet gears in conjunction with the Dwarven accessories. Remember we haven't got to 5.2 yet in this video so we still have the old accessory to use. Uh, I went to 2505 on the crashing ship and 2389 on the control and 538 on the CP. These numbers work really well with the crafting rotations that we have. Uh, there is absolutely no problem in hitting 100% high quality using only normal quality materials. Uh, so all of this works. And let's take a look at the proportionality right here because this is the thing I'm trying to focus on in this to help you in your melding. Because no matter how much material you have or don't have or how high your numbers are, if they're in proportion it's going to be so much easier to put together a good crafting rotation that's going to give you the kind of results you want. So let's take a look at these numbers again and we're going to divide 2389 we're going to divide that by 2505, and we are at 95.3%. Uh, I've been you know, looking at this for a long time and really started just doing the math and breaking this down. So let's just say that you, um, you don't have a, you know, a ton of material to use. And with this uh, 2140 requirement, you say, okay, I have enough material to put my craftsmanship around 2300. Well, if if your craftsmanship is at 2300, how much control do you want to add to it? Now, keep in mind you can always add more, but it just might not be necessary to do that. So we're going to say 2300, and we're going to multiply that times 0.95. That's 95%. And we come up with a number 2185. Okay, so if you did some melding, you know, light melding, and you used the Ariella template, and you kind of tweaked it all out, and you had your craftsmanship at about 2300, you could put your control up to about 2200. And you would be in really, really good shape to do a, a good crafting rotation that's going to work. Everything is going to line up with everything else. You might need to use a high quality material or so. Um, that's not really the most important thing. The most important thing is that you be able to put together your crafting rotation without it driving you crazy because things don't match up quite the way they should or everything's a little bit off. That's what we want to try to avoid here. All right, let's take a look at some templates. All right, now you notice on the one I did here recently. You'll notice that there are two things here that are real important on any template. One, there is a range, a minimum item level, which would be 430 for the Dwarven stuff, and the maximum, which would be 460 for the facet stuff, and the relevant items will be marked so that when you come to this page, it's going to be really easy 
to get the information you need and see only the items that you need to see. Now, if you're looking through, let's just say if you're looking through uh, random melding guides here and there, no matter where they come from. Now, some of these come from well-known sources, but you got to look at stuff like this. Okay, this to me, right off the bat, tells me that this individual really doesn't know how to use these templates. Because look at all these items that are absolutely not relevant here. And if I say show marked items only, well, they didn't bother to mark anything. Okay, so that's just not going to work. There was also no range. This goes from 330 to 460, so you have all this stuff that's not relevant. And you just have to kind of go through all this. The other thing I see here is that the um, craftsmanship and control are a bit out of whack. Now, you know, you can pentameld everything and put the big numbers in there, you know, and all that great stuff. But the fact is, you may not need all of it, and you may be spending a lot on an unnecessary fifth meld. It might not be important at all to have that fifth piece of materia on there, and we all know that that last piece of materia, if you put it on every tool and every piece of gear, is going to cost you a lot of money. Either that or you're going to be crafting scripts forever to come up with all that material. So what I was trying to point out here on this melding guide is that I really think at this point, this is the maximum melding that I would recommend on this. Just four melds, and you don't have to go real crazy with it. You can do less with this. You know, you don't have to meld this high in order to get a good uh, result with your crafting. If you maintain your proportions between your craftsmanship and your control, it's going to work out a lot better for you. You know, you can do a set like this with three meld. As long as you keep your CP up, I would say 538. I wouldn't go any lower than that. Uh, you could do 536, but it's going to be pretty tight. You don't necessarily have to go all the way to the max of 541. That's not absolutely essential by any means. But if you keep these things in proportion, it's going to work a lot better for you. The only other point I wanted to make, if you're doing a budget meld, and you want to get the most out of your melding materia, okay, in this first slot, you notice on this uh, tool, it only has one slot, one open slot. I put a, um, a grade 8 or a tier 8 craftsmanship. It actually is a lot more economical and a lot more practical if you have a limited amount of materia and you don't have all the money in the world is to use a grade 6. The reason for this being is that the grade 6, when you graduate from this gear set uh, and you go to the next gear set and you're going to um, retrieve your materia from this and you're going to convert these items into uh, materia and you're, you're going to adopt your, say, your three-star crafting set. Well, that grade 6 materia is going to come back to you every time. It's 100% retrieval on that. So you can use in these, like these first two slots on this hat. You know, I used a grade 8 here. It's not necessary to use grade 8. You could do a grade 6 on both of these, and you would be in really great shape here. You'd have plenty of stats to get the job done uh, because we have uh, crafting rotations that will get it done for you. You know, you can do that, and that way you can recycle 100% of all of this materia that's in the open slots, every single piece of it. You don't lose anything, and you can use that again and again after every set. Uh, in a future video, I'll talk a little bit more about the relationship between crafting and gathering, but to put it uh, in a nutshell right now, if you have a limited... Uh, amount of materia and you don't have you know 50 million gil to spend on melding something if you have to make a decision between putting an investment into your gathering set or your crafting set where are you going to put your materia my advice to would be to put it on your gathering set but if you could do some good decent melding on that gathering set and you can start grabbing some high quality uh, materials from the gathering nodes then all of your crafting becomes very, very simple.
because you have high quality materials to work with. It means you don't have to meld all that expensive control on your crafting set. You don't have to do a penta meld on everything. You don't have to spend a fortune on it. Your rotations can be shorter. You don't have to use as many touches in order to hit 100%. And there's just a lot of advantages. And a lot of folks really like that crafting method where they pack their recipe with some high quality materials, use reuse, so they get some of those materials back. I want to thank you for watching this one, and we will see you in the next video, and hopefully we'll see you on Discord.